Hi there, it's Dr. Bernstein, and in this video, I'm just going to walk you through some of the very basic details for setting up a Works Cited page using MLA format. The first thing you need to know is that the Works Cited page is the last page of your essay and must be on a separate sheet of paper. If your professor says you need to write a three-page essay, your Works Cited page would be your fourth page, not your third page. Um, and even if your paper, say, is three and a half pages, you would start it, your Works Cited page, on a new page, which would be your fourth page. The phrase Works Cited needs to be centered on the top of the page. Um, you know, you would still use the same formatting in the upper right-hand corner of your page. You'd have your last name followed by space, followed by the page number, and then uh, right underneath that centered should be the phrase works cited. The W and the C are capitalized. The phrase works cited should not by, be italicized, underlined, or in bold type. And your works cited page, just like the rest of your essay, must be double spaced. So these are the very basic formatting rules. Um, and you should, obviously, you should write them down so that you have them handy. You can find plenty of information online, but you have to sort of wade through a lot of details. I'm presenting you with the most concise overview of Works Cited Pages that you can easily apply to your own projects. And there is something called EasyBib, E A sybib.com that a lot of people like now because you can just enter in the basic information and it's supposed to set up the formatting for you. And sometimes it works quite well and sometimes it doesn't. So I think it's really important that you know the basic rules so that you can double check to make sure if you use EasyBib, you can double check and make sure it did it properly um, because you know, if you have any glaring errors, those are things that are going to pop out to your professors and work against you. Now we're on to some other important details. Your entries on your Works Cited page, these are the entries where you're describing, you know, you're providing the information on the books, articles, essays, documentaries, etc. that you quote from in your essay. This is where you're going to provide the um, publication details so that if a reader is interested in the quote and wants to learn more, they know where to go find this source. So these entries need to be arranged alphabetically by last name. When there's no known author for a source, you alphabetize the entry by the title of the text. This is important because a lot of, a lot of online sources you don't provide you with the author, uh, individual author uh, for your source. So you want to know that in that situation, you alphabetize the entry by the title of the text. So an article titled Three Servicemen Statue would appear after a work authored by someone named Strong, but before an article written by someone named Van. Um, this is just something that comes up for people, and I just want to make sure that you're clear about this. Um, you need to capitalize the first, last, and all major words in titles and subtitles of works, such as books, articles, songs, and online articles. However, you do not capitalize minor words such as articles, prepositions, and coordinating conjunctions unless they are the first or last word of a title or subtitle. So here's an example, water and fire. You don't capitalize the A in and, or I want to starve. The T is a minor word, and you don't need to capitalize the T. Your source should have this formatted properly, but sometimes people start changing things, so I just want to let you know that rule. And also, if your entry extends beyond one line, you need to indent the second and subsequent lines five spaces. So let me take you over to the OWL, the online writing lab at Purdue, and show you their MLA formatting page as well as a sample format for um, an actual works cited page. So hold on one second. 
Okay, so if you go on to the OWL, you can get access to their MLA formatting and style guide. It's very, very comprehensive, and I'll go over some key rules for formatting uh, particular types of works in a separate video. But right now, I just want you to see all the information that you have access to, um, information on the basic format, on how to format books, how to format periodicals. Those are journals, newspapers, magazines, how to um, create works cited entries for electronic sources like um, websites, other common sources, additional resources, abbreviations, and then one, one thing that's really nice about this site is it shows you a sample works cited page. So you, you have the rules, but let's see how they look in practice now. So let me just move this over a little bit if I can. No, this is a little bit awkward. Hold on. Let me get the sample paper up here and open it up. And we're going to scroll all the way down here to the Works Cited page. So you can see how Works Cited appears centered, the W and the C capped. And you can see here the first that this book, the entry for this book, extends beyond one line, so all of the subsequent lines get indented. It's sort of the reverse of a paragraph. The first line doesn't get indented, but all other ones do. Um, and then you can just go through and take a look at how things are formatted on the page. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them.